to this video series on trees and tree-based data structures. In this supplemental tutorial, we'll show how to integrate an iterator pattern into our Java binary search tree implementation. A Java class may implement the iterable interface. If it does so, it has to implement an iterator method, which returns an iterator. An iterator provides several other methods. At a minimum, we're going to have to implement these two a method that determines whether or not there's another element in the iteration, and a method to return the next element. The reason that you would want to do this is so that you can iterate over your elements in your collection using an enhanced for loop, or a for each loop, using the following syntax. Our goal will be to integrate and test an iterator in our binary search tree class. The iterator will perform an in-order traversal of the binary search tree, as it's the most natural ordering. The logic and the flow for the in-order will need to be adapted to each method. Each next method will return the next element and set up the iterator's state for the next call. Initially, we'll start at the root. Here's our implementation from before. I'll go ahead and make it implement the iterable interface. Let's remind ourselves how the in-order traversal actually worked. In the in-order traversal, we set up a stack to keep track of previous nodes that still need to be processed. We continued the traversal while the stack was not empty and while the current node was not null. We also had logic to distinguish whether or not this was the first time that we encountered you so that we could push it for later, or it was the second time and that we processed it. We'll need to adapt this in our iterator pattern. First, the iterator object is going to need its own stack. It's also going to need a reference to the current node. Again, we initialize it to the root. The hasNext method basically encapsulates our while condition, which looked like this. We'll need to adapt it here, though. The next method is going to need to return the current item, but also set us up for the next iteration next time somebody invokes the next method. We note that if there is a left child or a left subtree on the current node, then we're going to need to traverse all the way down it to the left until we get to a node that then is processed. This means adapting that while loop from before, using the same conditions here. and distinguishing whether or not this is the first time that we've encountered it and need to push it for later processing, or if it's the second time that we've encountered it. If it's the first time, we need to push it and update our current node to the left child. If it's the second time, then we need to get the item that's stored at that node so that we can return it. Since we're processing the node and saving the item so that we can return it, we end this loop. Each call to next doesn't invoke an entire in-order traversal. It only advances it to the next step in the in-order traversal. Let's go ahead and test this. 
instead of invoking the in-order traversal, which returns a list of all the elements in an in-order traversal, we'll go ahead and use an enhanced for loop. and we get the same ordering. 